The sun was shining on the sea, shining with all his might. He did his very best to make the billows smooth and bright, and this was all. Because it was the middle of the night. The moon was shining sulkily because she thought the sun had no business to be there after the day was done. It's very rude of him, she said, to come and spoil the fun. The sea was wet as wet could be. The sands were dry as dry. You could not see a cloud. No clouds in the sky. No birds were flying overhead. There were no birds to fly. The water and the carpenter were walking close at hand. It was like anything to see such quantities of sand. If this were only cleared away, they said, it would be grand. If seven maids were seven mocks, swept for half a year, do you suppose well, we're set. they could get it clear? I doubt it, said the cousin. <laughs> and she of the Oh, oysters, come and walk with us. The walrus did beseech. A pleasant walk, a pleasant talk along the briny beach. We cannot do it more than four to give a hand to each. The Otis oyster looked at him, but never a word he said. The Otis oyster winked his eye and shook his heavy head, meaning to say he did not choose to leave their oyster bed. But four young oysters hurried out, all eager for the tree. Their coats were brushed, their faces washed, their shoes were clean. And this was odd, because, you know, they hadn't any feet. But four more young oysters hurried out. And yet another four. And thick and fast they came at last, and more, and more, and more. All hopping through the frothy waves and scrambling towards the shore. The walrus and the carpenter walked on a mile or so. And then they rested on a rock. Conveniently low. And all the little oysters stood and waited in a row. The time has come, the walrus said, to talk of many things. Of shoes, of ships, of sealing wax, of cabbages and kings. Of why the sea is boiling hot, and whether, and whether things have wings. But wait a bit, the oysters cried. Before we have our chat, for well, some of us are out of breath and all of us are back. <laughs> no, Larry. No, Larry, said the carpenter. They thanked her much for that. A loaf of bread, the walrus said, is what we chiefly need, and pepper and vinegar besides are very good indeed. And now, if you are ready, Mr. Sheer, we can't begin to be. But not on us. After such time, there's going to be a dismal thing to do. The night is fine, the walrus said. Do you admire the view? It was so kind of you to come, and you are very nice. The carpenter said nothing but Cut us another slice. I wish you were not quite so deaf. I've had to ask you twice. It seems a shame, the walrus said, to play them such a trick after making them walk so far and making them trot so quick. The carpenter said nothing but the butter spread too thick. I weep for you, the walrus said. I deeply sympathize. With sobs, he snorted out those of the largest size. Holding pocket handkerchief, tears streaming. Oh, oysters, cried the carpenter. You've had such a pleasant run. Shall we be trotting home again? But answer came there none. And this was scarcely odd because they'd eaten everyone. <laughs>